in a nutshell, we have four key players in an Angular 2 app. Components, directives, routers, and services. Let's take a look at each of these building blocks in more detail. At the very core, we have components. A component encapsulates the template, data, and the behavior of a view. So it's more accurate to call it a view component. Every Angular 2 app has at least one component, which we call the root component. But in the real world, an application often consists of tens or hundreds of components. For example, imagine we want to build an application like Udemy. We can divide this page into three components, navigation bar, sidebar, and courses. So each component has the template or HTML markup for the view, as well as data and logic behind that view. Components can also contain other components. So in the list of courses, we can have multiple course components, and in each course component, we can have another component for rating that course. The benefit of this architectural style is that it will help us break up a large application with various complex views into smaller, more manageable components, or as I said, view components. Plus, we can reuse these components in different parts of an application or even in a different application. For example, we can reuse this rating component here in a totally different application. Now you might be saying, look, Mosh, I understand what you're saying about components, but what are these components really like in the code? A component is nothing but a plain TypeScript class. So just like classes in other programming languages, it can have properties and methods. These properties hold the data for the view and the methods implement the behavior of the view. Like what should happen when we click a button? Now, if you have never worked with Angular before, one thing that may be new to you is that these components are completely decoupled from the document object model or DOM. In applications written with plain JavaScript or jQuery, we get a reference to a DOM element in order to modify it or handle its events. In Angular, we don't do that. Instead, we use binding. So in the view, we bind to the properties and methods of our component. If there is a change in the value of a property, the DOM element bound to this property will refresh automatically. So we can't and shouldn't get a reference to that DOM element in order to update it. Similarly, to handle an event raised from a DOM element like click, we bind that event to a method in our component. When the user clicks that element, the corresponding method in our component will be called. Now, in case you're curious why these components are decoupled from the DOM, the reason is that this makes our components unit testable. If you have a plain class that is nothing but a bunch of properties and methods, we can easily unit test it without having a document object model. Now, sometimes our components need to talk to backend APIs to get or save data. To have good separation of concerns in our applications, we delegate any logic that is not related to view to a service. So a service is just a plain class that encapsulates any non-user interface logic, like making HTTP calls, logging, business roles, and so on. We have another key player in Angular apps, and that's a router, which is purely responsible for navigation. So as the user navigates from one page to another, it will figure out based on changes in URL, what component to present to the user. You will learn more about this in the section titled Building Single Page Apps. And the last key player in Angular is a directive. Similar to components, we use directives to work with the DOM. But a directive, unlike a component, doesn't have the template or HTML markup for a view. We often use them to add behavior to existing DOM elements. For example, we can use a directive to make a text box automatically grow when it receives focus. Angular has a bunch of built-in directives for common tasks like adding or removing DOM elements, adding classes or styles to them, repeating them, but we can also create our own custom directives. So this is the big picture. As you go through this course, you will see each of these building blocks in action. Well, hello, it's Mosh here, your Angular 2 instructor. Thanks for watching my YouTube channel. This video you just watched 
is actually part of my comprehensive Angular 2 course for beginners. In this course, I will walk you through all the core concepts of Angular 2 in a step-by-step -step and pragmatic way. By the end of watching this course, you will have all the necessary skills to build real-world applications with Angular. If you want to find out more about this course and the content I've covered, click on the link in the video description. With this link, you can get the course with a discount. Hope to see you in the course.